to the next slide. So um, we've been traveling pretty much nonstop, uh, save maybe a few months here and there. If you add together the time that we've been traveling in the last 14 months of our marriage, it's about eight months, eight I believe. Months eight or nine months, and uh, these are just a few maps that we put together just a few to give, to you, give an idea you a picture of where we've been going. Been going. And this uh, is actually last July when we were, uh, so it's uh, You're somewhere on here. <laughs> hmm? oh, I was yeah. going to say the congregation is on this map. This was last July when we traveled in, in the United States, uh, and uh, we played in, in different parts of the eastern, eastern parts of the United States, and flew down to Texas for a conference, and of course in between our our concert presentations, we do reach out to, to people who don't know Yeshua and God, and God always finds a way to put them in our path so we can meet with them and share. The next is just another map. It's, um, it's a bit of a bigger tour. But bigger tour. That was, tour. A, that was a <laughs> September Cross tour. And uh, September, the months of September and first week of October. So you can see the, the driving in the blue and the flights in the red. And, and uh, of course, we don't have other ma maps, just to give you an idea of some, some of our travels. Next slide. Um, okay. We, okay. This was supposed to be at in the end. It's okay. This was supposed <laughs> to be in the end. But in March of uh, this year, we created a new t shirt. It says, Yeshua, the truth, the way, the truth, and the life. And it says, Any questions at the bottom? So it's just a way to reach out to the community. I mean, we live in Jewish Toronto. Our neighbors are Jewish. Everyone, you know, everywhere you turn, there people speak Hebrew. So we're based in that area. That's, that's where we live. We, we're there. And, um, and uh, just one of our projects to reach the, the, the lost. It's kind it's of a provocative thing to do. Yeah. Dan is here. He's standing in, the, in a mall that's very close to our home, and it's basically a Jewish mall. So sometimes we'll just go for a stroll through the mall and see if we provoke any questions. So yeah. and we have those t-shirts available today, by the way. We provoked a lot of rolled eyes and, and, and a couple of questions. Actually, the questions came in Florida. We, we had an Israeli ask us oh, what, yeah. the, what the Hebrew lettering on the t-shirt means, and we had a chance to explain to him that it was the name of the Messiah found in the, pro in the prophets. So, um, next slide. Um, we have been blessed to, to speak at a lot of churches that never heard of the Jewishness of Yeshua, you know, the Jewish roots. Um, and here I was uh, speaking in Tampa. Because we travel full time, we meet all these churches. Uh, this is uh, a Russian Baptist church that never heard of Yeshua's Jewish roots. And I spoke to them in Russian, gave my testimony, and shared about how I can still be Jewish and, and believe in Yeshua. And they were very touched. I, I didn't know which response we'll get from them, whether it's a positive or, or not, but they were very touched and embraced that. And we found out that they had one, one or two Jewish members uh, there that have converted to Christianity, but realized that they could still remain Jewish and worship Yeshua since, since they're born Jewish, of, of course. Uh, uh, and it just really blesses them. But we are constantly sharing in churches as well reaching them. We, we, we had a chance to share at Mennonite churches. Um, Amen. Yes. We, We're uh, speaking at the Methodist church tomorrow, actually. So <laughs> God is just opening the doors to bring more people to, to unity with the Jewish community and, and with the Messianic community. And it's wonderful to hear reports back several months later to hear that pastors have, have received a revelation of the importance of Israel, standing with Israel, digging into their roots. Um, and these are pastors that were formerly very replacement theology and, and had did not want to have anything to do with it. So it's very encouraging. Yeah. Uh, we can go to the next slide. Um, in, in between our ministry concerts where, where we usually raise support for the ministry, we, we then reach people during the week. A lot of them are Jewish families and we meet with them all the time. And uh, I'm blessed that we really have, have in the last six, three to four months, we, we had a record number of Jewish families that we've been meeting with that never heard of Messiah. Some of them are prominent business people that support their, their towns and their communities and local orchestras and we shared with them and here we actually shared for the u.s troops in, in atlanta the the chaplains of the airport heard we we're in town and they they said you know we'd love you to play for the troops and so we shared with the troops and uh, it was funny because after two hours of sharing suddenly the the head of the airport said that said that we we needed to get an extra permit and we didn't quite get it but the outreach was already they were done. a little bit too late <laughs> <laughs> but we we completed the outreach and and many were witness to and, and uh, even people at, passing through the airport uh, heard our music. We had a chance to, to do a mini concert in the airport as well and people were ministered to. Amen. Next slide. These are just two examples that Dan mentioned that we don't necessarily even seek people out to share with them. God brings them directly to us and, and we don't even have to ask. 
Um, the first one on the left is me with a lady that we met in Florida. Her name is Ruth. And she, uh, she was brought to one of our uh, outreach, outreach concerts by some friends of ours. And she's actually a Holocaust survivor. She was born in Germany. She escaped one of the trains. So she literally, yeah. her and her family escaped off of a train. They jumped off of a train in France and were able to escape the concentration camps. So she came to one of our, our, um, our concerts and I shared my testimony, our, our testimony of being uh, Jew and non-Jew grafted in together into the Messiah and how I had come to know the truth through uh, the scriptures. And I shared also my German heritage and how it was a picture of reconciliation between Dan and I. This is actually the second Holocaust survivor we met in Florida, it was wonderful. But Ruth was really touched, she came to us afterwards. She invited us to play, I, she found out I played Scrabble, so we played Scrabble together. You can see it in the picture there. And we brought uh, a Tanakh with us and she asked us a lot of questions, she said, are you Jewish? Did you have a mikvah? How are you? She just didn't understand. So we had a chance to share with her that following Israel's Messiah is an Israeli. It is a Jewish thing to do. Um, it is the, the be, you know, it is the fulfillment of what it means to be Jewish. And so we shared from the prophetic scriptures with her. And I've been in touch with her a little bit now, just over by, by um, letters. Your letters. Yeah. And, and so we will we'll actually see her again because we're headed. We're scheduled for Florida in December. So. She actually invited us, she lives in kind of a, an elderly village, and she invited us when we return in December to, to play for um, the, the, uh, the residents. So there might be an opportunity there to, to minister to a lot of Jewish yeah. people. So the next uh, picture, honey, do you want to? Next was uh, actually a stranded Israeli soldier who came from the Israeli army to visit uh, Toronto. And, and he got stranded at the airport. He doesn't speak English very well. So put him in prison <laughs> and that wasn't very nice of the airport people but but uh, one of the Christian ministries that invited us to minister on uh, actually it was for Passover uh, evening they uh, bailed him out they, they heard that he he had a little trouble they paid the amount needed and just got him to stay with them for a while and he ended up coming to our Passover concert and, and uh, he was very confused how come all these Christian people because uh, it was a Zionist organization and how come they're so, so supportive of Israel and celebrating Passover he was just baffled and um, as we stayed overnight at this uh, resort area that they have uh, next morning I, I didn't miss a chance I said Melissa before we get out of this area let's make sure to speak to him and we went to have breakfast and I chatted with him in Hebrew and uh, turns out he just started reading his Tanakh and I, I pointed him to scriptures about Yeshua and he said he will read it he will he will pray about it but he admitted that it wasn't a mistake that he got stranded at the airport he, he knew he had to be there and, that was the only way that he would attend and hear about Yeshua, you know. And uh, he was a very lovely young man, still lost, confused, you know, searching for his ways. To be, you know. Comes from an Orthodox background, but admitted yeah. that just three weeks prior to being accosted at the border, he started reading his Tanakh again. So we so pray for him. And God is seeking yeah. him out, just like those scriptures were saying. He's seeking this young man out. I guess he's one of the many, many that we've been reaching. We could share so many stories. Yeah. I mean, we've met with prominent, as Dan said, prominent businessmen that God has uh, put A couple in of weeks ago, we met past. a Jewish radio host who is not a believer, has been wondering about my testimony. Uh, I guess uh, just to answer a brief question, Simon had asked us last night about, uh, last time we were here we shared that we had uh, some opportunities to go into Orthodox synagogues and play. Um, since last year, um, we've been blacklisted by uh, an uh, anti-missionary organization and so those doors are not necessarily so open anymore, but uh, in private, Context, we still are ministering. So well, well, actually, it was a blessing because they they went against us for reaching the Orthodox communities. But now a lot of Orthodox are going to our website and looking up our testimony. So while these guys are going to every Orthodox shul in Toronto, in a big city of eight million people, and telling them not to listen to us, people are coming to our website in bigger numbers than we ever seen, and and are listening to us. So, Free know, publicity. So. And the radio host was one example. He's, yeah. uh, he interviewed anti-missionaries in the past, and he interviewed me in the past when I used to be a secular musician. And, and so he was really touched by our testimony. He, he even asked for messianic congregations in Toronto that he can attend. Uh, and so doors are opening to reach the lost. And, Amen. I guess the last uh, slide we have is a, just a brief two-minute video we wanted to share with you. Yeah, we, we uh, completed a, an, the outreach DVD that we, we mentioned last year. 
it was a big project, took 11 months of filming, and uh, you know, through the support we get, we're able to do these type of projects, and uh, we'll watch it. This is a testimony that we filmed. Well, we were in Spokane, Washington State, on a, on a tour there. We crossed paths with a unique man. He's actually a former Orthodox rabbi who lived in Israel, and then he moved to the U.S. to 